All right, so we're happy to have Tobias Hansen as the last speaker of these parallel sessions, who's going to talk about back to string theory. So this is going to be an analytic bootstrap talk, uh, I guess complementing the matrix bootstrap and numerical bootstrap talks we've had before. Okay, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here. This talk is based on these uh, two papers. And uh, so the motivation behind this is that for, for any string theory in ADS5, we don't yet know the full world field theory. And the idea is to um, first fix the amplitudes and then as a way to make uh, a way to finding more out about the world field theory. And um, so my outline is I will give a one slide review of the ADS Vero Sir Shapiro amplitude because this is uh, very much a follow up on this. And then I will tell you how we define the ADS Veneziano amplitude. And then I will talk about the two main ingredients that we need to fix it, which is uh, the pole structure, which uh, depends on the spectrum of exchange operators, and uh, the world sheet representation. And then finally, when we have our result, we do some checks. OK, so the ADS Vera Sor Shapiro amplitude is, um, is a four graviton amplitude for um, ADS for type 2B strings, type 2B strings on ADS5 cross S5. Or and we define it in terms of this uh, CFT correlator in n equals 4 super mills of the operator in the stress tensor multiplet. And then by doing a certain integral transform, we define the ADS amplitude. And we found that uh, we can find it in this uh, word sheet as, as a word sheet integral over the Riemann sphere. And uh, we, this is a small curvature expansion. Here we have alpha prime over ADS radius squared. So if we take the ADS radius large, we get back the flat space answer G0, which is 1. So this is just the usual flat space zero to Shapiro amplitude. And in a series of papers, we found the first two curvature corrections. And I think Fernando will talk more about this on Friday on his review talk. And so now we want also to find the ADS Veneziano amplitude. So the problem is type 2B on ADS 5 plus S5 has no open strings. So what is the simplest ADS5 CFT4 with open strings? Um, I would argue it's uh, to just take an Orienti fold of type 2B on ADS5 cross S5. And this has several other ways to think about it. So you could also think about N D3 brains near a D4 type F theory singularity, or type 2B with N D3 brains, 4 D7 brains, and one ori Orienti fold 7 plane. Um, so then we have these uh, seven brains where open strings can end, and they can uh, propagate in eight dimensions. You can also take orbitals of this, um, which correspond to taking some other F-theory singularities. So now we have this theory. We have the luxury that it has, in principle, three descriptions. So uh, on the boundary, we have an n equals 2 uh, superconformal gauge theory with USP 2 and gauge group. Um, we have the SO8 flavor group, which we call G. And we have the parameters N, which we take large, and the tooth coupling lambda. Uh, in the bulk, we have type 2B gluons on ADS5 cross S3 now. Um, here, G becomes the gauge group. And we have to take the string coupling to be small. And we have, again, the ADS radius and alpha prime in this dictionary. And in principle, we should also have this 2D world sheet theory, which um, which we kind of use indirectly to later on. And these other possibilities, orbifolds, are in this case, we have g equals e, either u4 or so4 times so4. Um, OK, so what's now the ADS amplitude? In this case, it's defined in terms of this uh, CFT correlator of an operator from the flavor multiplet, which has an index in the adjoint of the group g. And we do the same integral transform as for the for the Biro Shapiro amplitude to get this ADS4 gluon amplitude. And um, we can consider the color or an amplitude, which is the prefactor of this um, whatever multiplies this trace of four group generators. And we do again a small curvature expansion, and the leading term is the usual flat space in its own amplitude. Um, and we want to fix these curvature corrections. Um, so this is our plan, how, how we want to do this. Um, 
On the one side, we will use the partial wave expansion to fix the pole structure of the amplitudes in terms of OPE data. And on the other hand, we make a single valued ansatz for the world sheet integral. Uh, both expressions kind of have unfixed data, but by evaluate, like equating them, we can fix the unfixed coefficients and get an answer. OK, so let's first talk about the pole structure. Um, we can do, uh, like in flat space, we can ex extract the resonances by doing a partial wave expansion like this. And for the Veneziano amplitude, we get this, this spectrum here. So we have the mass levels, delta, with the spin. And we get this linear rigid trajectories. Uh, in ADS CFT, the, the analogous concept would be the conformal partial wave expansion. And uh, for large radius, we should get back the flat space string spectrum. So we, at large R, we get just the, the, the masses here. So we can express it like this in terms of the mass levels. And then we get these curvature corrections to the dimensions. So because the dimensions depend on the TOF coupling, um, these have to be in long superconformal multiplets. And um, the CFT picture is that these are mesons, which means they are bound states of two quarks, where quarks are hypermultiplets in the fundamental of the gauge group. And the analog of these operators in, in n equals 4 would be Konishi and all these infinite number of long single particle multiplets. OK, so now let's look at the pole structure. We can do take the correlator and do the conformal block expansion to write it in terms of this OPE data. And if we take this and transform it to the ADS amplitude, we find that um, the kth curvature correction has to have this pole structure. So there are poles up to order 3k plus 1 where the numerator functions are explicitly computable in terms of OPE data. So the OPE data is not, it's mostly unknown. We know just the flat space limit and then there. Capital T is, uh, S and T are dimensionless Mandelstams. OK, now we can come to the world sheet representation. So we have this open string world sheet. We can conformally map it to, to a circle with insertion at the boundary or to the upper half plane with insertions on the real line. And we can place three operators at 0, 1, and infinity. And then we get this world sheet integral, which is, of course, the Veneziano amplitude. And for the corrections, we expect that we get a similar world sheet integral with an unknown integrand. So what kind of functions can, can this be, this integrand? Um, to find more about this, you can consider a nonlinear sigma model and do a small curvature expansion of the metric. Uh, so you take the Polyakov action with the curved metric, expand in, in small curvature. And then what you find is you get the flat space amplitudes with extra soft graviton vertex operators. So if we take like this process, for example, with one extra graviton vertex operator, in our coordinates, we get the, the four open strings here and one closed string inserted on the upper half plane. And in, for flat space amplitudes, this just gives expressions like this, where Q is the mass of the graviton. And now if we do the soft expansion, we do an expansion in small Q, such integrals, because it's a two-dimensional integral with these absolute values, um, gives you only single value with multiple polylogarithms. Um, so in detail, the the, the result is that the, cur the kth curvature correction contains single valued multiple polylogs of weight up to 3k. So I think I will mostly skip this slide about polylogs. So multiple polylogs are um, the class of functions like logs and polylogs. And we allow singularities at 0, 1, infinity, where we in inserted the operators. And these functions are, of course, multi valued. And single-valued multiple polylogs are just the single-valued versions of this that were introduced by Brown. Um, OK, so let's now do our ansatz. So for the kth world sheet integrand, we, we allow these polylogs up to weight 3k. And each of them multiplies a polynomial in S and T. So um, this table shows how many multiple polylogs in, there are at each weight, up to 6. And for the single-valued version, these are evaluated on the real line. 
because that's where we integrate the final integral. So you see at weight 6 it's quite important to take the ansatz is much smaller if you have to take the single volume functions. Um, but for the first curvature corrections you, you can be conservative and take a multi valued ansatz and even this even for this matching with the pole structure fixes the complete ansatz and then you can check that it also fits the single valued ansatz. For the second correction we directly use a single valued ansatz because it's much smaller and the pole structure fixes this up to a single coefficient. Okay, so so the multi-valued and single-valued ansatz for the first correction have 33 and 22 rational parameters, and this is the result, which I wrote in terms of classical polylogs because it looks more familiar. It's not obvious that this can be written in terms of single-valued polylogs, but, but it's true. And then we can do checks. So we made some assumptions, um, so we have to do checks. First of all, we can consider the low energy expansion. Um, so this is the small, the expansion is small Mandelstam, or so small alpha prime. Makes contact with the low energy effective action, which is super young moles plus derivative interactions. And uh, if you write it out, you get the super young moles amplitude, and then you get these uh, derivative contact terms. So the alpha zeros are fixed by the flat space amplitude, and our result fixes also all the alpha ones and alpha twos. And combining with localization, we can also fix the full D6F4 term. Um, so localization provides one linear constraint for each of these interaction terms. And the computation has been done for SO8 and U4 just recently. There was a talk about this uh, yesterday. And so we have here one check. The alpha 100 agrees with our computation. For this, the second one is not a check because we have to use this to fix the final coefficient in this uh, second correction. Um, the next check is the high energy limit. Uh, so the high energy limit can be independently computed by classical computation, um, as was done in flat space by Gross and Mende. And we generalized this to ADS. And I think Fernando will also talk more about this uh, on Friday. Um, the final result is that if we take S, T, and R all to infinity at the same rate, um, we get the flat space, the high energy limit of the flat space amplitude times this, times this exponential correction. Um, this exponent con can be computed by just doing the world sheet integral by a saddle point at z equals s over s plus t. And since this is an exponential, we now get a relation of all the um, curvature corrections on the saddle. And we can check that indeed the square of this first correction on the saddle agrees with the second correction. And another check is that uh, the high energy, this formula also works for, close, for the closed string amplitude. And um, the open and closed strings satisfy this relation as uh, expected by, by reflection principle, uh, which was explained by Gross and Manes. Does this epsilon correction really mean finite music, like non-banishing? Um, because there is of the prefactor of yes, it, it goes like s. Yeah, it goes like s squared. Over r squared. Okay. No. no, they all scale at the same rate. So. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and the final thing we can compare is the OPE data. We can compute all this um, OPE data, these corrections to the dimensions and OPE coefficients, and for the leading rigid trajectory. This is what we get, where delta is the mass level. And um, so we have here the first correction, the second correction. And for each correction, there are certain terms that can, can be compute, compared to a classical solution for a um, glued folded open string. So, um, so there are also other terms that have less powers of delta. And these correspond to the one and two loop fluctuations to the classical solution. So for the, these terms 1 and 2, um, there's no independent computation. So this is an open problem for semi-classical computations or integrability to compute these numbers and see if it, it agrees with our result. OK, so let me sum up. Um, we um, use the pole structure of the ADS amplitude from the OPE and combined it with a single-valued watch sheet ansatz uh, to fix the ADS-Veneziano amplitude. 
And then we checked it by comparing the low energy expansion with localization, and comparing the high energy limit with the classical computation a la Gross and Mende, and um, comparing OPE data for massive strings with a different classical computation. So some open problems. Um, can these conformal dimensions be computed independently, for example, from integrability? Um, we're also looking at other backgrounds, like type 2A on ADS4, um, like dual to ABJM, the TOFT limit. Um, it would be great if you can do such, compute these string amplitudes beyond the small curvature expansion. And uh, it would be very important to also compute them directly from string theory. Thank you. Do I understand correctly that the nonlinear sigma model that you're considering is just ADS5 uh, Polyakov action? Yeah, it's just a toy model. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a CFT. Yes, it's, it's just to see what you get from the curve matrix. So, so how, how do you know for sure that you're getting the Veneziano amplitude? It's, it's, it's not a string theoretic calculation. Yeah, I mean, it's just an argument for using a single valued answer. So we, we saw for the first correction that even without a single volume on this, we get the same result. And um, for the for the Virasur Shapira amplitude, we also have much more checks. And then we have just four, gra four gravitons. And this also leads to single volume functions. Have you also computed the four graviton amplitude? Um, yeah, for n equals four, so going well. Yeah, and I think the four graviton amplitude would probably be the same in this theory, at least in the planar limit, at least. I think. Yeah. Oh. Right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, I guess in that case, let's thank the speaker.